begging for her. And she begged for her life and for the life of her baby. And this goes to the level of what um, a small literature refers to as neurosecurity, which is that if you can get into someone's brain, then you can read the information on top of it. Eventually, we will be able to know how to interpret that um, information reliably. We're still getting that. But there is a whole new set of operational considerations around whether or not someone who's had a BCI in them or continues to have a BCI in them becomes an information risk by themselves and what we do with them or what we should allow to be done with them um, as they go about their life of service. Later on, we found out that it was a collaborative work between the Canadian government and the American government, the CIA and the Canadian government, who actually condoned this experimentation on unknowing uh, victims, actually. I think, and again, this is science fiction, but I think this is really important. We are starting to see the ability for BCIs and AI working together to modify more therapeutic application in, for example, dealing with post-traumatic stress syndrome and also moral injury. However, if you could modify memories, you could potentially modify putative violations of IHL or the memory of putative violations of IHL, right? The Robocop problem, right? You could allow someone to do something or make them do it, and then you could erase memory of the fact.